Okay, in this example, um, we're uh, shown a linear function. And um, the purpose of this linear function is to determine uh, the average apartment rent um, uh, in the city of Houston, Texas. We're calling this uh, value Y. Um, uh, a certain number of lapsed years after 2000. So um, that value we're calling T. So T is the um, input quantity. Uh, elapsed years is the input quantity in this uh, linear function, and the output quantity is going to be um, the average apartment rent uh, in the city of Houston. And so we want to find the slope of this um, uh, linear function and then interpret that slope as a rate of change. Now, we've already seen some previous examples of interpreting the slope uh, as a rate of change. Um, so we have some skill already at, um, at that. Uh, we know that the slope uh, uh, tells us the change in the output uh, as the uh, input increases by uh, one unit. Uh, but the difficulty in this example is going to be uh, first determining uh, what the slope of this uh, line is. So if we were given this uh, linear function as a formula, it would be um, uh, almost trivial to determine what the slope is. That's easy to determine from a formula. Uh, but in this example, we're given our linear function as a graph. And um, that makes it a little bit more challenging uh, to determine uh, what the slope is. Uh, fortunately, now we have a formula that we can use um, to determine the slope. Uh, and so uh, let me scroll up here and show you what this formula is. Um, to use this formula, you need to know uh, two points um, on the graph of a linear function. And um, the slope is always going to be the change in the y value uh, between these two points um, divided by the change in the x uh, values uh, between uh, these two points. Uh, so you can um, uh, uh, write that formula down as change in y over change in x. Uh, that's the change in y between two points on the graph of the linear function divided by the change in x uh, between those same two points on the graph uh, of the linear function. Um, an easy uh, way to summarize uh, that uh, uh, formula is rise over run. So that's a convenient uh, mnemonic device, memory device, that we can use uh, to remember this formula. Uh, so we use rise here to uh, represent the change in the y values uh, between the two points um, uh, on the graph and the run uh, to represent the change in the x values between uh, the two uh, points um, on the graph. And uh, students often find this uh, easy to remember, rise over run. Um, now, um, another way uh, to, um, uh, uh, or a way to calculate, actually, uh, this uh, change in the y values and this change in the x values uh, is to simply take uh, the difference in the y coordinates uh, between the two uh, points that you know on the graph of your linear function. That will give you the rise or the change in the y values. And then uh, the, uh, the change in the x values or the run, you can find that by changing, uh, by simply uh, taking the difference in the x coordinates uh, between the two points um, on the graph of your um, linear function. And you can use any two points on the graph that you like. That's one of the important uh, properties of uh, a slope. Um, uh, no matter which two points you use to calculate the slope for a linear function, um, no matter which two points you use to calculate the rise, no matter which two points you use to calculate the run, uh, you'll always get this, uh, the quotient will always turn out to be the same. This quantity, the slope quantity uh, that you get from these calculations will be the same no matter which two points uh, that you use. So if we can locate a couple of uh, points here on the graph of our, our linear function, then we can use this formula to calculate the slope. And once we know the slope, then um, I think it will be uh, fairly easy then to write down um, the interpretation of that slope. Well, uh, I think pretty obviously here uh, we can see uh, the coordinates of two uh, points on this line. Um, if we look at this uh, point here on the far uh, left-hand side of the graph, uh, we can um, identify its coordinates uh, fairly easy as uh, 0 and uh, 600. Uh, this is actually the, the uh, y-intercept of this line. Um, so the um, uh, uh, first coordinate uh, is going to be 0, and the second coordinate, I think, is uh, pretty clear, is uh, 600. And then uh, if we look at this um, far right-hand point on the graph, uh, we can also pretty easily identify its coordinates. Uh, it looks like uh, the first coordinate is uh, 12, 
And uh, the second coordinate appears to be, uh, if you look carefully here, um, uh, 780. So uh, we can use these as the uh, uh, two points um, in our um, slope formula uh, that we use to calculate the rise and that we use to calculate the run. So I'm going to uh, call this point x1, y1. Uh, and I'm going to point, uh, call this uh, second point uh, x2, uh, y2, and um, we'll substitute these x and y coordinates into our slope formula uh, in order to calculate the slope. But I want to point out again that uh, it's important to note that you can use any two points on the graph of the line. Okay, So I chose these two points because it was convenient, and I could uh, identify their uh, coordinates easily. Uh, but you can use any two points on the uh, graph of a line uh, to calculate the slope of the line. You'll come up with the same value um, each time. All right, so uh, let's substitute uh, these uh, x and y values into my slope formula, and uh, let's calculate the slope. So um, let's see, the second y-coordinate here is uh, 780, and uh, the first y-coordinate is 600. So my change in y, or my rise, is going to be 780. Uh, minus 600, which uh, is easy to calculate. That's 180. And um, let's see, uh, my x, uh, uh, my second x coordinate, um, I'm using as 12, and my first x coordinate here, uh, I'm using as 0. So my run, or my change in x, is going to be the difference between those two x coordinates, 12 minus 0, or uh, 12. And if you take 180 and divide it by 12 and reduce that uh, quotient, uh, that works out to be uh, 15. So um, um, so in, it looks like that the slope of this line is going to be um, 15. So what that tells us is, again, uh, that the outputs are going to change by uh, 15, uh, in fact increase by 15 since this is a positive uh, slope, uh, as the inputs increase by uh, one unit. So if we um, uh, uh, explain that interpretation in the uh, context of the problem, uh, since the output here is the uh, average rent uh, in the uh, city of Houston, uh, we know that um, uh, we know that uh, the average uh, rent um, uh, in Houston uh, is changing by or increasing by. Again, since this is a positive slope, so is increasing uh, by uh, fifteen dollars. Uh, we're measuring uh, the rent in dollars here, of course. Um, as the um, uh, uh, input increases by one unit, so as the elapsed number of years uh, from 2000 increases by one. Uh, so you can write down as the elapsed number of years increases by one. Um, that's kind of a, a mouthful uh, 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 to say and a little bit uh, uh, cumbersome, uh, clumsy to write out. Uh, maybe an easier way of explaining um, as uh, the elapsed years um, increases by a uh, one is simply to say that the average rent in Houston is increasing by fifteen dollars uh, per uh, year, and there's our interpretation uh, for the slope.